Hi everyone, my name is Vasya Tremson. I'm the COO at Torch Sensors, and today we're in Sacramento, California, performing active fire burn testing with our sensors. And I'll place it down like this, and it's looking directly out of the tree, measuring all the areas outside of it, even though the backside is blocked by the tree. Otherwise, it has this 330 degree view where it will see the fires on all sides of it. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at the application experience. So here we have, you know, adding our first property. So right now we are at test property in Sacramento. Let's just put in the address here. Since we installed the sensor right here on the tree right beside me, all that needs to happen is you just need to scan a QR code that basically corresponds to the sensor. So I go plus, I scan the QR code on my other phone. Usually it would just be a sticker or like an image and that would work. Now I'm going to place, you know, where I am right now, which is my location right here, set the position and confirm it. And that's it. Now we have the sensor installed right here. We can click on it and we can see all of the real time data coming from the sensor on this tree. All the factors are normal. There's no fire happening. Let's go on the hill, on the hill down. So behind me right now, we have the pile that we're going to light up. We installed the sensors around this pile. So we have um, sensor E over there, sensor C over here, sensor D over there. They are measuring different things. So we put that sensor in the line of sight of sunlight so we can actually compare the flame with the sun, which is one of the most frequent false positives that our sensors are able to filter out. We put that sensor in the shade that needs to still see the fire that's in open sunlight. And then we put this sensor in direct line of sight. We're going to start with these distances and then we're going to slowly take them back and see how well we can detect the fire from how far away. And no matter where the sensor is, we'll be able to detect the fire in any case. Okay, so right now you can see that all of the sensors are normal, right? So all of them have 0% risk of fire. This pile will be burning right now. Whoa. Yeah. So you see the flames, so we're getting warnings from Sensor E and sensor D. Same time. Now we're getting warning from sensor C as well over there. So as you see, you know, this is pretty much instantaneous. As soon as we saw the flame, what scenario they were placed in, direct sunlight, shade, far away. Um, we see both of them giving warnings. You know, all of this information is seen here. So now we're going to move them farther away and see what happens after that. Michael, can you move that one farther? Now Michael's sensor showed me a yellow warning as well, as you see right here. So Michael is standing all the way over there. And then you see from the flame, that is a pretty, you know, pretty large distance since the flame is still very small over here. Um, we're getting the warning on my app right now. I think that's impressive. This sensor right there, that is sensor C and we're getting a warning from that. So all the way to the flame, which is pretty small right now from over there, you know, we're getting this warning on my phone right now. On this tree, this is sensor E. It's looking at the flame. As you see, most of the flame is actually blocked by other branches that are wet and you can't even really see the flame behind them. However, this sensor still gives us a red warning. So within my app, you know, right here, um, I'm still able to see a, uh, the highest risk warning. And also we have the difference of the shade and the sun. So this is another scenario that's a little bit difficult sometimes. And as you see, again, it's, it acts perfectly well, even in this scenario with both the line of sight obstruction and the color difference. So I moved the sensor backwards by about 20 yards, uh, maybe a little bit more. And as you see, the sensor values turn from a red alert to a yellow alert because the distance between the sensor and the flame increased. And because of that, the field of view of the flame actually decreased. But we are still warning the user immediately of the fire happening. All right, so it's already getting pretty dark, uh, probably time to end, but we got a lot of measurements today, probably going to spend all night looking through them, analyzing them, perfecting all of our algorithms, and you know, continuing to make the best fire detection system in the world.